it'll get better. So I'm not sure how you found this video amidst all the fog on the internet. Regardless, welcome to Ryan Make, where we're hopefully dispelling a lot of the smoke and mirrors to improve understanding. So in my Flexible Rubens tube video, we had a flame that was modulated by pure sound. A standing wave created variations of pressure inside the tube to have compression and rarefaction. That was a pretty abstract concept, especially because we couldn't see what was going on inside the tube. So I built this clear Rubens tube where we're gonna be using fog to see if we can modulate the fog coming out of the tube as well as see clear compression and rarefaction inside the tube. If you're interested in making this project or other projects like it, check out my Instructables page in the link below. So sometimes the best way to get past a bunch of hand waving to understand something is to take it to the whiteboard. So first let's look at sound. It is an oscillating pressure wave that goes from low to high to low to high pressure. And every time it repeats itself, it's a wavelength. So if we take that and use a graph of the pressure from low to high inside our tube, we can see an example Rubens tube here. The green wave is our transmitted wave. It moves through the tube and reflects off of the orange rigid end cap, which then reflects back. But you can see they line up perfectly. This creates constructive interference where the low and high, the anti nodes, are points of high pressure variation, which actually pushes out a lot of propane, which is why those flames are taller. And then the nodes are low pressure points or low pressure variation, and therefore their, their flames are shorter. But that's only because our tube length matches a factor of our wavelength. So if we look at this slightly shorter tube, we get the antithesis of constructive interference, destructive interference, where it effectively cancels all of our sound pressure waves out and we get very little variation. Now, a majority of frequencies are somewhere in between where there's more or less a muddled frequency where it really could be who knows and it's hard to see what's going on. But let's look at our actual fog Rubens tube to see if we can see these points of compression and rarefaction where there's high pressure compression and rarefaction where there's middle or low pressure. Let's take it to the tube. Okay, so we get some interesting factors here with the fact that this fog is heavier than air. It sits pretty well on the bottom of our tube. So it looks like we have this end is being treated differently than this end, but maybe that's just because it's closer to the speaker. I know you're thinking I'm just blowing hot air, but that's really not true. I'm just trying to make things clear. Look at that. Chaos, calm, chaos. Calm, calm. I think we can see it. Let's see if we can get another angle. Okay, so you can see we have some turbulence, some calm, and then some turbulence. And we'll try increasing our volume. I mean, look at that. We've got turbulence, calm, turbulence. I mean, there's clearly likely a node here and then anti-nodes on either side where there is all this turbulence. Now let's strike our standing wave. Okay, we're kind of getting the same sort of thing where you see turbulent flow out here, smooth flow here. The convenient thing about a regular Rubens tube is that the flame has a fixed height. It doesn't just go and flare in perpetuity where the fog just keeps flowing and flowing. It's therefore a little bit harder to see a transient effect with something that's persistent like fog. But I still think that we clearly saw it, and I'm really excited. I think there's more work to do here. So you might be thinking, Ryan, those results were pretty hazy. But I would ask that you look at it from a perspective of sometimes visual phenomena or phenomena in general can be hard to perceive. That's why it's so important to not just have one mindset, one point of view, because you might miss something extremely important. And that's what we do here on Ryan Make. We, we look at a lot of different things. We explore different concepts 
And so if you like that idea and you like projects, I would ask that you subscribe to Ryan Make. If this was a fun video, I'd say give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And then if you have some feedback on this video or other videos or other projects you'd like to see here or on my Instructables page, I'd ask that you leave your feedback in the comments. And if you want to be kept up to date on everything that's going on here on this channel, I'd ask that you ring the bell. So until next time, this is Ryan Make, where we figure it out. Thanks.